Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Joseph's Parish, Port Hawkesbury. Uh, we're pleased to have those of you who are uh, with us online and those who are in church with us. And this weekend is a special weekend for our parish. Uh, because of COVID restrictions last year, we were unable to have a parish celebration for two, um, two anniversaries that took place. Father Conrad Edwards um, celebrated his 25th anniversary of ordination, and Deacon Berkeley celebrated his 10th anniversary. So we're having a celebration here tonight in the parish. Uh, immediately after Mass, we'll go downstairs and uh, have a dinner together, um, spaghetti dinner, uh, and then um, some cake and ice cream, and you will be pleased, or you're all invited, I should say, uh, to express your best wishes to both Father Conrad and Deacon Berkeley. So please join us if you can. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news o'er all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you, Louise, for those very kind words uh, at, the, at the beginning to, today for Mass. Um, very pleased to have uh, Father Gary McPherson join with us to can celebrate today. And, um, and congratulations to, to Berkeley on, on 10 years as well. And I know I've had lots of congratulations, so I'm not looking for that, but so it's, uh, it's great. You know, 10 years and most of them putting up with me, you've done all right, bud. That's, that's good. As we gather today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins 
of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the high priest questioned the apostles, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than human beings. The, the God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Then the, can the council ordered the apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they would rejoice that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. And did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. 
restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, 
I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about ninety meters off. When they had gone ashore, <coughs> they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. <coughs> A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? <coughs> He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this, to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know, I don't think it's a, a too much of a stretch to say that the experience of the last two years with COVID has been pretty traumatic on many people. And we all, I think if we admit to ourselves, we have this desire to go back to normal. We long for the things that are familiar, a certain comfort, a surety. We do what we know, and yet so much has changed. We're not the same people we were two years ago. Maybe you or someone you love has had COVID. Maybe you've experienced a death in your family or friends, 
I know many, many people have experienced a deep separation from their children, from their grandchildren. So we're a bit like Peter and the disciples today. Our world, too, has been turned upside down. They had the experience of Jesus and Jesus' death and crucifixion. And they're, they're kind of bewildered. They don't know where to go and what to do. And Peter, of course, bearing perhaps even a deeper burden of guilt and shame for having denied Jesus three times in the courtyard on the night Jesus was arrested, never expected that life would come to this. Never expected that we'd go through that kind of experience. So what does Peter say? I'm going back to the familiar. I'm going fishing. Back to normal. To the security that I know. It's surprising, eh? Because we heard last week that as those disciples were gathered in the upper room, They'd had the Holy Spirit poured out on them. So you think, you know, maybe they would have cottoned on. Maybe something would have dropped. But that'll tell you what happens when trauma hits. But John is so good. He sets this gospel at night. And there's something really richly symbolic about that. So they're in the nighttime fishing. And they're pretty secure in this knowledge that fishing at night is a really good thing to do. They know that's what they're experienced at. But they caught nothing. And as the day began to crack open, they get this invitation from the guy sitting on the beach to do something different. Not the same old, same old. Put your nets over on the other side. And immediately they're struck with this super abundant catch of fish. And through what was revealed and having had that experience, they recognize Jesus. Peter jumps out of the boat. It's the Lord. He's running up to the beach only to encounter a charcoal fire. Same type of fire. We only hear about it twice in the Gospels. Same type of fire that Peter was warming himself when he denied Jesus. But at this fireside, Peter would encounter Jesus as never before. Now, you might have expected Jesus to have a certain amount of rancor, throw whatever, I don't know what a divine hissy fit would look like, but you know. But Jesus doesn't call down Peter. He doesn't berate him. The only thing that Jesus says to him is, do you love me? Three times. Do you love me? And if you do, after Peter responds in the affirmative, take up the mission. Tend and feed my sheep. See, they'd already been filled with the Holy Spirit. that had been poured out on them. We heard that last week. But it wasn't enough what was required was this deep, profound encounter with the person of Jesus Christ, where Peter particularly had to come face to face with his own weakness, with his own fragility. Only then, in that experience of Jesus' mercy and grace, could he take up the mission of service. See, Jesus always looks to the future always looking to the future of what is possible with God's grace, what is possible in our lives, what God's grace and mercy and forgiveness will do in our lives to enable us to put the nets out over on the other side. He asks the only question that matters, do you love me? Do you love me more than any of these? And Peter says, yes, Lord. So what then did the future look like for Peter? Well, we heard about that a little bit in the first reading. Not long after this experience, they're standing teaching on the street corners at the Sanhedrin, 
forbidden to do so, but filled with the Holy Spirit that nothing could contain. Talking about dropping their nets on the other side. So where do we find ourselves today? How might we find our own selves, our lives reflected in this gospel story? See, perhaps in understanding this gospel, maybe we need to go back to the very front part of John's gospel where Jesus asked the disciples, what do you seek? And they give him a curious answer, where, well, where are you staying? As if Jesus is ever staying put in one place. And Jesus' response is, come and see. It's always that glimpse to the future. Always the invitation to find Jesus anew. To be open to the life and abundance that Jesus wishes to provide. To do what Jesus does. To tend and feed the sheep. Us. Our brothers and sisters. We come to Mass today. Many of us have the same struggles of the disciples in the boat. We're living in a time that could only be described as liminal. We feel like we've got one foot in this part of the threshold and one part here. We're not sure exactly where this is all going to lead. We're not the same as we were and we're not sure what the future is going to look like. It can seem so uncertain. We can seem very uncertain about where we're headed. But we're called today, like those disciples, to cast their nets on the other side. And the question is then, do we trust Jesus' voice and Jesus' call to our own hearts? What parts of us need reconciling? Who needs forgiving in our lives? Whatever it is Jesus is speaking to us, what do you seek? And we come to our own version of the beach today to be fed and nourished at this Eucharistic table, to be fed as Peter and the disciples were on that beach, nourished by the mercy and love and the grace of Jesus, to have the same Spirit poured out on us as they had in the upper room, The words that I will use in a little while over the gifts are not just meant for the bread and the wine and the altar. They are meant for each one of us who is gift to God, bringing ourselves to encounter this Jesus. We humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration. That's our invitation, to give our lives in love. The only question Jesus asks of us in any age, no matter what our life circumstances, no matter how uncertain the times may be, no matter how much we like our comfort zones, the only question is the question that it was asked on the beach. Do you love me? And if our answer is yes, then how can we refuse also to say yes when we encounter one another's need? The sick, the lonely, the wounded the sorrowing, the defeated, the bewildered, the anxious, the uncertain. If you love me, take care of my people. That should echo in our spirits. And there in our spirits, the Holy Spirit waits to help us witness to Jesus' words and deeds. The trauma of COVID, I think more over than anything perhaps, is that it makes us want to retreat into ourselves to isolate, to be careful, to be weary, to think only of my rights. And while we long for things that may be familiar, we focus on Peter today, who was guided by God's limitless love and mercy. Jesus' last blueprint for us, shown forth in this gospel today, is for a church that spills divine mercy over a world to follow the Holy Spirit to unbounded spiritual love that moves us from whatever comfort zone or uncertainty to care for one another. It's the only answer. It's the only answer that has ever been. To feed and tend one another. To move forward. Don't go backward. Don't forget, do this in memory of me.
So as we continue tonight, I'm going to ask Deacon Berkeley to stand, because once a year, all the deacons of our diocese are invited to um, renew their, their commitment to, to their service by their ordination. And we thought tonight, since um, we're having a little celebration, that we might do it a little bit earlier than, than uh, we thought it might be a, a fitting way to, to do this. So Deacon Berkeley, will you commit yourself to join me in service to the people of God in this community of St. Joseph's as a minister of the Word of God, as a minister of the altar, and as a minister of charity? With the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful minister of the gospel, meditating upon the Word of God, preaching it in the Sunday assembly, and proclaiming it each day with your life? With the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful minister of the sacrament of baptism, so that adults who are seeking new life in Jesus Christ, and infants who are brought to the church by their families, may be reborn in the waters of baptism? With the help of God, I will. Will you faithfully visit our people and have special care for the sick and the dying, bringing them the healing power of Christ in Viaticum, our sacred food for the journey to the heavenly kingdom? With the help of God, I will. Will you be the church's witness for the union of husband and wife and provide guidance and support for families as they grow in their Christian life together? With the help of God, I will. Will you provide for the needs of the poor? Give visible witness to God's call for justice and truth here in our community. With the help of God, I will. Will you lead this community to prayer and praise so they gather on Sundays as the people of God? With the help of God, I will. Will you pray with our people and for our people? so that God's will may be done among us. With the help of God, I will. I invite you to stand. People of God, this is your deacon. You live among you as your servant, your companion, your guide in the Christian life. Thanks be to God. As we stand together, we profess what we believe, that I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we pray now for the grace to carry on the work of all who are called to follow Christ. For the church. That empowered by the Holy Spirit, we may give convincing witness to the freeing and healing power of the risen Lord Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For insight and courage that we may bring the witness of the gospel to social and political issues of our day, and that the Spirit will give us words to effectively communicate the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. For greater discipleship. That we may not be limited by past failures, but be open to God's new invitations and rely upon God to bring the fulfillment, the mission entrusted to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That innocents who live in Ukraine and other places. 
that those struggling in anguish and fear from war and indeed all peoples may soon and very soon know the blessing of a springtime of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who earn their living by the sea, may they enjoy in safety an abundant catch and the nations of the world make ever more efforts at preserving the beauty of the oceans and the fish of the sea. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise ministry in the church, especially myself as your deacon and Father Conrad, that their actions may be rooted in love, service, and commitment to Christ as they assist fellow Christians in deepening their discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hearts of the sorrowing in our community, including Nancy Day on the death of her uncle Abel Sampson, and for the Maddie family on the death of Josephine Tate, my aunt. May they be wrapped in Easter's glorious promise that those gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, live with the risen Christ, the risen Lord forever, in joy beyond understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who upholds us in all circumstances, tonight we seek your support and guidance as we navigate the challenges of living our faith. We know we are called to follow Jesus day in and day out with the same fervor as those who have gone before us. We ask for strength, courage, and determination in God's holy name. Amen. 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 Our offertory hymn this week is number 426 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Again, number 426 in the Catholic Book. Sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion. Thunder like a mighty flood, Jesus out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. Alleluia, bread of heaven, here on earth our food and stay. Alleluia, hear the sinful turn to you from day to day. Intercessor, friend of sinners, earth's redeemer, plead for us. Where the voices of the blessed 
Join the chant victorious. Alleluia, King eternal, you are Lord of lords alone. Alleluia, born of Mary, earth your footstool, heaven your throne. You within the veil have entered, robed in flesh, our great high priest. You on earth, both priest and victim, in the Eucharistic feast. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Let me set this sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of His name for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with yours, lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And the heaven and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death as our ransom from death. And in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest Hosanna Hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Wayne Joseph our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and now who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Oh, grant us, grant us peace. Peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn in this week's service is number 543 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Volume 3, All Creatures of Our God and King. Again, number 543 in the Catholic Book. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, burning sun with golden beam and silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise God, oh, praise God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, rushing wind and breezes soft, O oh, clouds that ride the winds aloft, Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, rising morn in praise rejoice, O oh, lights of evening find a voice, O oh, praise God, O oh, praise God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. O flowing waters, pure and clear, a music for your Lord to hear. Alleluia, Alleluia. O fire so masterful and bright, providing us with warmth and light. O oh, praise God, O oh, praise God, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dear Mother Earth, who day by day unfold rich blessings on our way, Alleluia, Alleluia. The fruits and flowers that verdant grow, let them God's praise abundant show. Oh, praise God, oh, praise God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, come all you of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Alleluia, Alleluia. All you who pain and sorrow bear, praise God on whom you cast your care. Oh, praise God, oh, praise God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I want to say a, a welcome to uh, Berkeley's family is, is with us tonight. They're, they're over yonder. It's always great to have you guys there. And, uh, and uh, my own folks are here tonight with... Uh, with with a couple of friends who are um, they're part of our adopted family, so that, that's great, to, <laughs> lovely to be able to have you. And thank you guys for coming out. I do want to say a very public thank you to the parish for their ongoing kindness, their support, the immensity of the work that they take on. Um, and uh, as many of you know, this is a pretty busy weekend because they pumped out about 260 turkey dinners mm -hmm. yesterday, and then they're. We're downstairs again tonight, so I, I want to publicly thank them for all their support to me and to Berkeley and to the entire parish. They are tremendous. It's a gift to be here. So give everyone. You, know, you want to say anything? No, I'm 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 the quiet one in the back. <laughs> 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 yeah, you just can't hear the comments is what he's saying. <laughs> Gary, it's great to have you. Thanks so much for being here. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And please join us for our closing hymn this week. It's number 435 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Lift High the Cross. Oh, Again, number 435 in the Catholic Book. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our Savior trod, the Lamb victorious, Christ, the Son of God, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Each newborn servant of the crucified bears on the brow the seal of Christ who died. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name.